there guys welcome back to full circle with joyce i sent any tenor for your company i see you guys on twitter there's a few of you who are engaging with me and uh, i really do want to say asante sana uh let me see if i can get to those posts just now if not i shall pull them up as we go along um but again double two triple nine is the sms line and uh, remember you can also comment on our social media which is on instagram at switch tv ke on twitter and facebook at switch tv kenya um and i do appreciate you guys who are engaging with me let me see where are these uh the pirate kid uh you say um unfortunately we lack management skills there's some unless they hmm unfortunately it's still not refreshing i'm gonna get to those though for you guys in just a bit for now let me introduce my next guest uh her name is sonny kamau and she's a skincare specialist and the owner at sonny's sonny touch wellness center karibu sana to the show thank you Joyce. and we want to talk about skin bleaching this is a massive topic in a lot of developing countries uh jamaica really struggles with this as well west africa really struggles with this as well a huge issue and uh, certainly not a new phenomenon in this country or in this continent too um at all it's been around for decades skin lightening products are sold you know on online platforms but the world health organization warns that skin bleaching can cause liver and kidney damage, psychosis, brain damage in fetuses, and even cancer. And so why are people still bleaching their skin? This is what we want to talk about today. Sonny, as you've mentioned, this, of course, is a very huge topic uh, and a very emotive one at that. In your opinion, what do you think leads people to try and pursue skin bleaching? Well, uh, skin bleach, the reason why people skin, uh, bleach their skin, it's because of low self-esteem and the influence from the celebrities. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, like once you see that uh, someone used to be a dark-skinned person and then, <coughs> excuse me, dark-skinned person and then they uh, become an artist or uh, they tend to bleach their skin right. and it's sad because the uh, majority of people think it's a quicker way of getting money but they tend to forget that at the end of the day is damaging their skin right yeah although even for these celebrities i think a lot of them have come out to confess that sometimes it's not just it's not because they want to but i think there's a system around us that has this defined a so-called standard of beauty right that yes. being beautiful is being light skinned it's being very fair yeah. we see it in korea like yeah. uh, women who are very very fair are considered more beautiful in india same thing women who are very very fair are also considered beautiful here we actually apply a denominational value to it you know when we're uko saying rangi ya thao yeah that's right true, so yeah. essentially we're saying that people who are darker skinned are not of as the same value so really i think it's an entire ecosystem around us an entire system around us that has told us you know black isn't beautiful which is a very sad situation because a lot of our children now grow up under that perception yeah that's true and uh, i would like to say this as in society you know nowadays uh, actually not even nowadays this started from way way back and i believe it's it's way back even before our parents were born and <coughs> excuse me it's uh, when you sit and think of where all this uh, is generating from i feel like it's it's lack of love mm -hmm. you understand so for instance if you're a dark skinned person and uh, most especially in africa as our parents are always busy they wake up you know running uh, here and there to make sure there's food on the table and the bills are sorted and stuff like that they tend to forget to tell their kids like uh Hi, my dear, you're beautiful. You know, they forget to give you that hug. Right. So when they come home, uh, as much as a kid is trying to connect with the parent, the parents are so busy, mm -hmm. you know, like they don't have that moment to make you feel loved. So even when you sit, uh, when, you, when you think or when you listen to people who have bleached, they'll tell you like, it's because when I was growing up, I didn't feel, I, I didn't feel loved, mm -hmm. you know came to understand or came to feel the real love when they are already grown ups especially when they go to campus mm. you know you're like um 
the number of ladies that are passing and just one dark skinned person in that group, you know, and then there are men aside, they'll go like what you've just said, hey, Rangia Thao. Yeah. At that particular moment, what do you think that lady's feeling? Mm -hmm. The first thing they'll think of is like, oh, I think the society does not appreciate a dark skinned right. person. Right. And we so, see it everywhere. Yeah. I think for the longest time, actually, there's, 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 there's something that is known as colorism. So we are, obviously, we can't be racist to ourselves. Like, yeah. you're black, I'm black. Yeah. Um, so it's like darker skinned people have to deal with a you know racism yeah and then secondly colorism now which is among us that yes. you know we want you know fairer skinned people you know uh, versus darker skinned people and we're seeing that conversation even spread globally mm -hmm. right there was a jamaican artist who mm -hmm. really was considering it uh, in nigeria there's a famous person there as well who was actually selling this mm -hmm. um, because she understood that there was even a market for it um, and then we have the likes of lupita nyongo who Oscar award winning actress yes. um, and then really shares about her struggles growing up and how beauty was perceived, um, uh, you know, for her to even come out and make it in the industry. And now she's actually written a book yeah. to try and address that topic among young girls. So what are the ways that you would say we can begin challenging society's mindsets or is it that point where we just kind of need to say you know what society is going to have to is, is going to think the way they do think and we cannot really control people's mindsets and so now we need to shift focus as you're saying to parents really teaching their own children self-esteem teaching them self-worth yeah uh, let me see this Joyce let let it start from home you know, once we get these babies, like, let it start from home. As a parent, what you give your kid is what they'll grow up with. And whenever they step outside, they will remember the values that they were taught by their parents. So, uh, for instance, I have a baby, and uh, she's slightly darker than me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she's watching. <laughs> Hi, Shane. <Aww>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she's slightly darker than me. Yeah. So, as a parent, it's my duty to make sure my baby is beautiful. You right. know, because, I mean, there are mean people out here, Joyce, you're just walking with the kid, and they're like, hey, how come your baby is darker than you? Mm. What do you think that kid will grow up feeling or thinking? So, right. as a parent, let's take it upon us that it is our duty to make sure our kids feel beautiful mm -hmm. inside and out. So by the time they are coming to face the world, right. they already know. They and have these, yeah, they have these values. Because some of these things we can't beat them, honestly, Joyce. But yeah. when you sit and remember the values from way back, like where you came from mm -hmm. and who you are, you know, because at the end of the day, the key is inside us. Right. So if the key is inside us, it's upon us, like, to show the world what we have. Okay. And as you've mentioned about Lupita, it's very true. Even when she was growing up, she felt some type of way. You understand? And to a point, she had to say a prayer like, God, please help me. By the time I'm waking up, let me find myself a little lighter. Mm. You know, as in that shows that for real, there's an issue somewhere. And please, I would love to beg all parents, let's take it upon ourselves. Right. Yeah, because there's a big issue. It's a huge issue. And we can't just um, say that once you grow up, you, I can deal with this. You mm -hmm. understand? But once we inject this to our kids at the tender age, as they're growing up, they'll definitely feel like... Hopefully they'll be in a better exactly. place. Exactly. Well, um, guys, I do want to invite your comments and your feedback. Double two triple nine is the SMS line. Let me know what you think about this topic. If you're uh, an individual with your melanin pop-in, okay, uh, let me know if you've ever found yourself in situations where you have felt like you're not good enough or that you've even wanted to bleach your skin. Have you ever considered bleaching your skin? Have you tried it? Let me know. Double two triple nine is the SMS line. I want to have a very candid conversation about this and about its effect. And right now, touching on those effects, let's talk about some of the methods in which people have been using to bleach their skin. Um, what are some of the common ways that are out there? Because I do understand, isn't it a couple years ago that the government did ban um, at least some forms of skin yeah. bleaching? Yeah, uh the thing with government, even if they ban, they're not cons they don't do it consistently. No, there Does must follow be, through. Uh, yeah, there must be someone who is following through. Because mm. I mean, when these people who are selling this uh, product, uh, whenever they hear that uh, there's an operation that is going on, 
they'll definitely get them off the shelf and put them back to the store. Mm. So when a client comes in, I mean, remember this is business. Mm. So they won't sell hakuna. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you, okay, wait a little bit. They'll just rush to the store and get the products out. These methods are, um, they use gel, they use pills, they use injections. Right. And they are very, very accessible. Like downtown anywhere you can just get them as little as with a thousand shillings you'll wow. be able to get like few of them okay yeah and when someone is is exploring this skin bleaching so they're here spending a thousand bob on a cup product they don't know where it's been created or manufactured you know if it's even safe they're not even they can't pronounce the ingredients that are in it um how long is one like sort of using these products in, in, in sort of the experience that you've seen? How long do people end up using these products to sort of achieve this color that they're seeking for? Well, it depends uh, with the type of mukorogo, how you are, you, you're doing it, yeah? Okay. And these creams, uh, the, those who do it like in, in, let's say in four weeks time, you should be able four to weeks. see the results. Wow. Yes, because, you know, they pick like... Uh, different types of them. They mix the lotions, they mix the pills, they mix the gel. Yeah. And there's a way, I don't know how they balance it because they want it to work pretty, pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And what they forget is that even when someone uh, is buying those products, that those uh, leaflets that are always inside, mm -hmm. no one takes time to read them. Mm -hmm. All they want is to have a fair skin. Mm -hmm. No one thinks about the damage. All they want is to have that uh, bright skin. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, it's 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 a whole sad thing, right? To think of. Can you talk to me about the actual process of what is actually happening when someone decides to bleach their skin? I mean, because even the the term that we're associating with it, mm -hmm. bleaching the skin, refers to a very like a chemical process that in many ways is stripping the skin, burning off, yeah. you know, the skin. Talk to us about the actual process of bleaching and what it's actually doing to one's skin. So uh, as black people, we have melanin. Mm -hmm. So and this melanin is, uh, we actually have three layers of skin. And as we all know, skin is the largest organ in our body. So which means we really need to take good care of it by mm -hmm. the use of the right products. Mm -hmm. So when we bleach, these products are very, very uh, harmful to the extent that they go and now start decreasing the uh, process of, uh, of melanin, the production of melanin rather. Okay. So it keeps going down and down and down. So it's the, the, the chemicals, these creams, these pills yeah. are decreasing yeah. the production of melanin. Yes. What are the effects of doing something like that? Oh my goodness. You, you, you don't want to think about it. Like the skin burns. It irritates your skin, the skin thins out, you miss out on uh, vitamin D, which uh, is very, very, you know, a uh, good vitamin that we all need. Yeah. They can't go and uh, they can't go in the sun. They have to work with, you mm. know, uh, umbrellas and stuff like that mm -hmm. because they can't stand the heat. Right. Yeah. Because the skin is so exposed. Yes. It doesn't and have it's a protective burning. layer. Yes. So, and there are other things too, like liver damage, kidney damage, psychosis, yes. brain damage, uh, and even cancer. Yeah. They don't spare, like they take all that out. Wow. Yeah. So the, the, the problem though with skin bleaching today is we've seen some certain celebrities out here who say that they've done theirs professionally, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so... Um, are they suffering the same effects, you know, because they're still creating a standard or having succumbed to whatever pressure there was, you know, from society to bleach their skin mm -hmm. now and then, and um, now they're out there sort of celebrating this. Right. And almost making it seem OK for one to wish to change their skin color. Uh, yeah. But those processes are far different from the ones that, you know, everyday ladies are just buying on the streets downtown. Yeah. So what they do, they do laser, and uh, it's it's lots of injections. It just doesn't happen once. So it's it's a process that happens, you know. So you it it can depending with how light lighter you want to be, it can go up to six, seven, eight injections. Wow! And they are costly. They are um, costly. Now the question is, are you even able to keep up with that right. with all that stress? You know, because <coughs> 
excuse me, as much as the us people that have not bleached our skin, there's that maintenance that we do to our skin. You know, there's right. that routine we follow every oh, morning. Oh, so even when one does those yes, injections, they have yes, to keep it yes, up. Yes, 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 yes. You have, you have this, that procedure that you have to keep doing. You have to keep visiting those dermatologists, you know. And you clearly, have, they're not, they're none here locally, we assume. No, unfortunately. They're banned by no. the government? Yes. Okay. So people are flying abroad yeah. to do this. So again, this is a question of money. And that's why, <laughs> you know, you, you need to live life in your own lane. Because you're going down to downtown Sjiwea, <laughs> buying a cheap product that you don't even know. Yeah. And then we end up with these people with, you can see like the scarring, or I don't know if it's scarring, but you can see, why is it that their knuckles or their toes, their yeah. joints? Do you see how uncomfortable they get? Like someone can just put their hands like this. They're right. always like... You know why do why would you like to suffer that much? Why do you want to become a slave to a product? Because what is that effect? Why is it that? Because presumably someone has spent this money and all these thousands to try and achieve this look. Why is it that with most people, the ones that we know, hey, we are majoribu ku bleach, it's because mm. we see the evidence of it. What is it about the knuckles and the toes and the joints that I guess the bleach doesn't take? Yeah, it it it. it just don't, doesn't uh, do much because now you see on the knuckles like it, it goes with your color that you have. Mm -hmm. So if you want, the more you keep on bleaching, the more it keeps on darkening. Mm -hmm. And if you bleach and <coughs> go outside uh, on the sun and you've not bleached, for instance, you're bleaching and then you go outside, the melanin will start or forming again forming again okay. yeah so you so have even to keep whichever way you do it whether by those fancy injections way, or these weird creams you have to way. maintain this yeah even the ones that are using this from a far distance you can still be able to tell like hey those knuckles mm -mm, kuna vile. yeah yeah Wow. Send in your questions, guys. Double two triple nine is the SMS line. Um, we're talking about skin bleaching here today with Sony. And um, Masi Ogola says, Morning, Joyce. I really love this topic. Personally, I love my mel melanin skin. I can never bleach. I'm proud of my skin. Thank you for that. And uh, I saw an interesting comment here on our SMS line as well. Someone asking whether men do bleach themselves as well. Yes they do bleach themselves and uh, you see uh, this that king of dance hall in Jamaica mm -hmm. yes he introduced bleaching and he even sang about it so youth followed that path it's affecting men as well yes so it's not just women nowadays where we are right now like even men are right. highly highly affected okay yeah so what do you say to someone who says you know what joyce it's not that i want to change my skin color it's just that i have um hyperpigmented skin or my skin tone is uneven is what you could say um and so they're looking to bleaching to help try and correct that or to the one who says i just want radiant skin i just want to have that natural glow and they think that bleaching would accomplish it how does one achieve all of those things without having to do bleaching? So here's the thing. Um, there are products that are prescribed by the doctor. So these products, the doctors will tell you like, if for long term use, they will bleach your skin. So you're supposed to use, for instance, if it's like the lowest percentage, you start with that like 2%. But you'll find people because they want it to go as fast as 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 possible they'll go to the highest one like maybe 10 percent and these again are all illegal products no they're those they're those which are genuine product mm. but you only supposed to use them as prescribed by your doctor okay so but when the then, government banned it's not that they banned skin bleaching they just banned a certain ingredient hydroquinone yeah hydroquinone we've got mercury and steroids those ones okay yeah, but they're those this this some of these creams that they mix yeah they are prescribed, they are medical. For medical for bleaching? <laughs> yes, like to clear hyperpigmentation. Okay, to clear hyperpigmentation. Yes, to clear not hyperpigmentation, to mm -hmm. not to bleach. But then you tend to find someone, they get so used by the fact that they're seeing that it's, it's, it's actually doing a good job. Right. It's actually doing, doing a good job. So they tend to, to stick with that product. Right. And yet they've been told like you're only supposed to use it for five days only. But for everybody else, like, you know, my guest here, my, my um, 
the person who commented, I believe it was Caroline, saying, I love my melanin, right? So if someone is not going to go the route of bleaching their skin, there are other ways for you to still have good, healthy, radiant looking skin. Aren't yeah, there? yeah, 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 yeah. By understanding uh, your skin type, this is where we tell people, like, come and visit a skincare specialist, you know? So that we be able to advise you accordingly on the products that you're supposed to use, which will match your skin type. Mm. Your skin will glow, you'll have a healthy skin, do the normal exercise, and you'll have your melanin popping and glowing. Right. Yeah. Let me read some of the feedback that I have coming in. Um, someone here says, good morning, Joyce. My neighbor's cousin decided to bleach her skin and it totally backfired. She got skin cancer. When we went to visit her in hospital, Alikua Amefungwa bandage from head to toe. And finally, this person actually died. Bleaching is wrong. We should, um, uh, flex in our dark complexions because black is beauty. What a sad situation that someone's, I mean, you didn't die because of an accident or because of like some sort of health complication that you know was external to you but because of something that one did in the name of trying to look more beautiful quote unquote it's a very sad yes. situation there that some would actually lose their lives because of this um mary from embakasi is watching hey joyce almost all products that fight acne lighten the skin that's the big problem because you want to fight acne but you end up lightening your skin and this is a very good um pointer here too because even when you look at Again, talking about the standards of beauty today, when you look at billboards around the city, as far as who is modeling on billboards for facial products or lotions or, I don't know, clear skin, even just regular advertisements, mutua knows a sofa set or a pickup and you have a light skin model on it. So certainly there's this idea of the standard of beauty being pushed upon us of being light skinned is very, very prevalent. Yes. And more so, we're even seeing um, advertisements for people advertising acne products and yet it's someone who's never struggled with acne yeah. or they have fair skin and a lot of people you know came out uh, talking about that too so why is that I mean to this co uh, comment here is it true then that a lot of these products that are used to fight acne and pimples also have lightening agents in them yes there are those ones which are too lighten, but as I'm saying like they're prescribed for a shorter period but you'll tend to find some some people don't want to leave it mm. and you're only supposed to use it where you have that pimple where you have that mark mm. yeah okay um hey joyce i'm gina from nakuru i love your show i have never felt like my skin was or is darker and i've never felt intimidated by the color yathao to feel like i have to bleach uh, the reason is my beautiful mother told me and my sister that we are beautiful. And she was that Rangia Thao, um, but she used to admire our skin color. I love my skin color and will never change it for anything in this world. Thank you very much for that uh, feedback and your comments right there. Um, Sony, and it, it, it speaks to exactly what you were saying. Yes. Like there's such an important role, you know, as parents, as guardians, to really speak into the lives of our kids. Yeah. Not just about their academic potential or their career potential but even about their self-esteem and that they're fearfully and wonderfully made that's true because now you see like that lady there's no one absolutely no one who can come and tell her and it's something to do with uh, uh changing her skin because mm -hmm. her mom injected that in her mm -hmm. yeah okay um all right well um i think uh, we do need to get ready to wrap up the conversation right now but sonia i really do want to thank you uh for being a part of the show and for your feedback and your comments as well to you guys and um if sonia if someone is interested in sort of getting in touch with you just to learn a bit more about their skincare how can they reach you uh you can reach us through uh 0793 Seven one six. Okay. Yes. And are you on social media? Yes, at uh, on Instagram, Sony underscore Touch underscore Wellness underscore Center. Okay. And on Facebook, Sony Touch. Just okay. that. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and for coming through to Full Circle today. Thank you for I having me. I do appreciate me, your time. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, uh, just before I go, let me remind you that Aladdin is offering a ninety percent discount when you shop of their clothing or groceries online. And as our dear audience on Switch TV, they're giving you an extra discount of. 
200 Kenya shillings when you use the coupon code SWH200. There's also a better deal where if you shop for amounts of 1,000 and above, you get to choose any product that will be labeled one bob and that could even include a phone. Your goods will be delivered to you within 48 hours of request, so do take note of that. And also, um, for all of our super fans, Switch TV is giving away tickets to watch Frozen this coming week or this week. Uh, grab a family combo at Anga IMAX Cinemas and enjoy family movie time. Um, each family combo is inclusive of four movie tickets, four boxes of popcorn and four bottles of soda only at Anga IMAX Cinemas. For a chance to win, just follow Switch TV pages on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter for more details. And also remember, if you watch movies at Anga IMAX, Anga Sky and Anga Diamond, every tuesday you'll enjoy 50 percent off popcorn of all sizes all right guys that's gonna do it today our time is up but thank you so much for your company uh to all of my guests as well i do appreciate you and to the crew here uh running the show at sana let's do this again tomorrow um it's already it's already gonna be thursday look at that the yeah. week is flying <laughs> <laughs> it's already gonna be thursday and of course we'll be here for change makers in the second hour but see you at 8 a.m. for more Full Circle with Joyce. Until then, God bless you. Ciao.